Uh, Matthew chapter 6, please. Matthew chapter 6. This was a, a subject that I'm not, there's no way to be able to preach what I'll preach this morning um, and give you in full detail all the Bible has to say about it because it's expressed throughout the Old Testament, even into the New Testament. Um, and uh, I think it's, um, it's no coincidence that Jesus spoke of it in his Sermon on the Mount um, a subject that is throughout is a, a a spiritual subject, one of importance throughout all of the ages, the age now and the age to come. Uh, I want to preach a message, or can I can I can I teach a message today? Uh, listen, I, all preaching is you be quiet. All preaching is is teaching with passion, teaching set on fire. That's what preaching is. But I don't feel the liberty all the time to preach something that I feel like needs to be taught first. Uh, so um, um, a growing church, folks want to be a part of a growing church. Folks want to be a part of something. I prayed this morning for a growing church. And, and I know the Lord said he will build his church. And, you know, I, I get all that. But a church grows through one, one particular way through an individual. You see, when an individual grows and grows in church, spiritual maturity, then the church grows because one grows up into soul winning. One goes from, grows from no tithing to tithing, goes from no telling to telling, goes from no ministry to ministry. You see, so three rivers will grow when you all grow up. No, when, when, when Christians grow. So three rivers will grow when Christians grow, and listen, I'm the pastor, and there is still an enormous amount of space for me to grow. And all the people said, amen. And uh, uh, there, there's still room for me to grow. You've been here uh, uh, almost as long as I have, some of you members, but there's still room for you to grow. So as I pastor, I can't just look at uh, uh, um, Brother Alex or, or, uh, or Angel or Crystal and Ernesto or, or Joe and say, okay, in order for our church, if, if, in order for our church to grow, you guys need to grow. No, I, it, it is incumbent upon its current members to continue to grow also. Um, so we want to be a part of that. We, we want to be a part of a church that um, has, um, uh, of course, spiritual substance and physical material substance. I look at uh, of church buildings and buses and facilities and things that other churches have, and I go, wow, wouldn't that be something if we had that? Wouldn't it be something if we grew to that? Now, I don't want what they have. I want our own, right? Like, it's, I, want, I, don't, I don't want, uh, as, a, as a teenager or a young guy growing up, I didn't say I wanted somebody's wife. I wanted my own wife. I want my own. I don't want somebody's kids, never. Uh, and now I don't even want my own. No, I wanted my own kids. Luke, sit down. <laughs> Get so offended. Hey, big baby, grow up. Uh, but I didn't want uh, uh, somebody's kids. I wanted my own kids. Oh, well, I, I, as I was um, uh, driving, let's see, I, I guess I'd have been somewhere in Virginia for the fifth time, um, where uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll meditate on things that I've read. I'll listen to sermons. Uh, and then, and what I do is I don't listen, I can't listen to too many because it's like I get filled up on all this truth and then I don't know what to do with it. So what I do is I listen to um, uh, as many sermons as I can to find something that really lit me on fire. Most of the times I just have to listen to myself. Uh, so I, I, uh, I'll listen to Brother Hiles, I'll listen to Bob Gray, I'll listen to uh, uh, my father, I'll listen to Curtis Hudson and Tom Malone and Lee Robertson, all those guys, you can find them on the internet, YouTube and things like that, and I'll listen to these guys and find these truths that light me up and, uh, uh, and, and stir me up and, and I'll shut it off. I'll, I'll sh I won't continue to, to continue to listen to preaching, it's just too much truth to handle. So I'll, I'll shut it down, or music. Music also stirs me up. And after a while, I'll shut it off and then let everything that I've put in my heart and in my mind kind of start getting mixed together. And from that will come um, uh, uh, truths and thoughts and uh, sermon ideas that um, uh, uh, I can share with others. And 
for, for such a long time, I thought, okay, I can only get sermon ideas from like a verse that I read. Um, and that, that's limiting the Holy Spirit. That's saying only, you know, Holy Spirit, you can only speak to you, speak to me through my daily devotional time when I read the Bible. But that's not the case. If I'm listening to songs and hymns and spiritual songs that are all Bible-based, and I'm listening to sermons from other pe- preachers that are Bible-based, isn't that also Bible? That is also Bible. So the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And he spoke. And, and I feel that the Lord spoke to me through um, uh, the different things, all the different ingredients that came in this week. And I want to give you a message this morning called, You Can Take It With You. You can take it with you. Uh, how many of you have ever heard the saying, you can't take it with you? Uh, you can't take it with you. We've all heard, you, uh, you, we've never seen a U-Haul following uh, behind a hearse on the way to the graveyard. Now, I have seen memes before, uh, pictures where there's a U-Haul behind a hearse. It didn't mean that that U-Haul was going with it. But, you know, people have been buried with things before, right? They dig up things uh, in archaeology all the time, people buried with treasures and uh, the pharaohs, and um, and, uh, they found King Tut's uh, inner sanctuary. Anybody hear hear that? They found King Tut's tomb, and it's just had all kinds of stuff in it. And uh, even um, uh, Native American uh, Indians, they would be buried with things for their journey into the new world. Okay, well, you can't take things with you. I've seen a guy uh, buried uh, on his Harley. Uh, I've seen uh, all kinds of things people are buried with. Um, the casket's open and folks will, uh, uh, well, his favorite jersey, his favorite uh, mug, his favorite Bible. His folks, you can't even take your, your physical Bible with you, but you can take the contents of the Bible with you. Uh, so what I want to speak to you this morning is about you can't take or teach teach, and then maybe in the future I'll preach a message on this same subject. But um, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 19. Verse 19. Jesus is speaking on the subject of wealth. He says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for he that either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other, you cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and mammon. Heavenly Father, bless this time as I, um, I hasten through this teaching. I'd ask that you would help us to uh, grab a hold of it and then begin to uh, apply it into our life and lay up treasure in heaven. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In Paul's writing to Timothy, uh, it's, a, it's actually a great portion. I wanted to read it this morning, um, uh, but I, 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 I want to be quick and to the point. I, I want to just lay the truth out in front of you, let the Holy Spirit do his work, and, 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 we'll, and we'll be done here. But in 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul is, is writing to Timothy, and he describes the danger of seeking to be rich, uh, of seeking to be rich. Now, can, I'm not asking for a show of hands, but I, I have imagined winning the lottery. I have imagined of, well, I, don't, I can't win the lottery because I don't play the lottery. So I imagine being the family member of someone who wins the lottery. I've imagined uh, of, of uh, you know, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and finding the golden ticket of some sort of riches, you know? And then, uh, and then I obtain those riches and, and then I spend those riches in my mind. I say, this is what I would do with this. This is how I would do that. I would, uh, all these riches. And uh, it, it just make life so much easier. Uh, because, because 70%, and I don't know who takes these polls, but 70% of, and I think it's higher, 70% of people's problems are financial problems. Financial problems. Um, but but I and the reason why I think it's higher is because it, is it's broken down into um, uh, health and happiness and finances and things like that. And one of them is health. Health, yes. But if you had the finances to pay the doctors to actually take an interest in you, 
You see, I have a great respect for doctors. They put a lot of time. They, they, they did the study. They did the work. They did, but I think I feel that a lot of doctors are missing actual, gen, uh, actual real um, uh, curiosity into their patient. Um, I, 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 being a, listen, there's a hierarchy of doctors as well as there is anything else. And um, uh, doctors want to be big-name doctors as well. But, uh, and and if, you, if you have a good doctor, keep them as long as you can. Um, Mr. Obama said you could. So you keep your doctors, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you, you keep your doctor, a good doctor, a, a good doctor. Uh, uh, but financial problems, uh, financial problems. And Jesus said it's deceptive. If you think money will answer all your problems, you're wrong. It will not answer all your problems. So that's what Paul was telling Timothy. The love of, mo- of money, he says in verse number 10, he says the, the love of money is the root of all evil, and that means all kinds of evil, all kinds of evil which have led many people astray. You know, God used uh, 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 some form or fashion to lead somebody to a church, and that person got into church, and they had a career, they had a certain uh, ability, and then there were greener pastures somewhere else, and instead of God leading them away now, God may call you somewhere and give you the, uh, the uh, permission to leave a church, but God did not lead you away from the church he planted you in for money. You see, it's all God's. God can take money and, and, and funnel it somewhere else. God can always do that. It's no accident uh, uh, that there's a promotion away from where God called you and where God led you. That's the temptation that, uh, uh, that's just one temptation. That's just one kind of evil that have led so many people astray. One big thing that's going on in America today is the prolif- prolification of uh, legalized gambling. Uh, I know Christians who are downloading gambling apps and betting money. Well, folks, it's, the gambling's still wrong. That money that you earned with the hands that God gave you and the feet that God gave you and the eyes that God gave you and the brain that God gave you, it's still wrong. It, it, it's still wrong. So Jesus described um, uh, uh, this thing about wealth and, and riches. The difficulty, he said it was difficult. I'll put it in, in modern terms. It's difficult for rich people to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, in Matthew chapter 19, the rich young ruler came and he asked Jesus. And he said, Lord, what about this thing about eternal life? And Jesus said, hey, you can do it. It's difficult, but it's not impossible. It's difficult, but it's not impossible, right? I mean, anybody, all, so all, all people can be saved besides rich people? No, it's difficult for rich people to be saved because riches blind your need. Riches blind your need. Each and every single one of you, if somebody came up today and they said, hey, here's this amount of money to, to answer all of your problems, what, what need have I? You see, there's blessing in being in need. Just as last week I preached about the need for valleys, the need for valleys. Don't avoid the valley and don't stay in the valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley. You, valleys are needed for us to realize, realize our dependency upon God. You see, there is a need uh, of the declaration of independence. Well, Christians need a declaration of dependence. We need a a declaration of dependence upon God. We just sang, I'm I'm standing on the rock, the rock of ages. I'm standing, listen, folks, Miss White, you would know, uh, but how the waves come in off the Pacific and crash against the rocks in Oregon. And it's, man, they crash, but does the water move those rocks when it, no. Those rocks are they're, they're there now. I don't know after time and whatnot. The, wa- the water would I, I get that water can carve out uh, 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 rivers throughout mountains. I, I understand that. But when those waves are crashing on the rock, that rock's not moving. So just because you're standing on the rock doesn't mean that the waves aren't going to crash, and it doesn't mean you're not going to get wet. But it means that the, the foundation's not moving. And if you're on the foundation, you won't move either. Um, so Jesus says that that these things they can. Uh, um, uh, pull you away. Number one, if you're not saved, they can um, uh, deceive you into not getting saved. You don't need a savior. You, you, your money is your savior. The Bible calls, uh, uh, Paul said it, he said that money can be an, an, an idol. And an idol is just another word for a God, a small g. So money can become a God. 
And God says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So Paul spoke to Timothy about it. We read where Jesus just spoke about it. Jesus said, it's difficult. It's not impossible, but here's how it's possible. Here's how it's possible. In uh, 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 Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 24, we just read it. He says, here's how it's possible. If you're rich, to have heaven. So for the rich person uh, to have treasure in heaven, how can a rich person, how does that seem fair? Follow the word of God. A rich person on earth can also have treasure in heaven? Yeah. Yeah. And a poor person on earth can have treasure in heaven. And a middle class uh, a person can have treasure in heaven. And a paycheck to paycheck person household can have treasure in heaven. Treasure in heaven. I like to think about that. I like where it says where thieves don't break through and steal. Somebody just told me that they had a, a, a dirt bike for their kid. Kid wanted to get into motocross. They had a dirt bike in a garage. And somebody broke into their garage and stole their dirt bike. You know what I don't like? I don't like it when people steal. I don't like thieves. I don't like, man, I can't stand when I have something, and, it, and, and it's not necessarily the stuff. It's a violation of, of it's, a, it's a violation, and I feel, I don't say it this way, but I feel violated that a stranger, or not even a stranger, it's not usually some guy walking down the street, it's somebody that knows you and knows what you have. They break in and steal what you have, and there is this anger, there's this, 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 um, this fear that it'll happen again, and this whole, like, man, I worked hard for that, and, and man, they stole that thing that meant a lot to me, and, 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 and there's just this violation and this uh, uh, uproar, this ocean of emotion that you go through that um, uh, uh, you feel like, man, I can't, what's the point of it all? I work real hard to gather these things and my kids break them. I work real hard to gather these things and people steal them. I work real hard to get these things and they break down on me and they, oh man. Jesus says, I, I already know all of that. So instead of working so hard, now Jesus isn't against dirt bikes. He's not against fairly air, family heirlooms. He's not against stuff. He says, don't lay it up and depend on it. He says, lay up treasure in heaven. Lay up treasure in heaven. So for us to overcome what he calls um, uh, at the end of this mammon, at the end of verse 24, you cannot serve God in mammon. For us to overcome mammon, which can easily enslave us and bind us and chain us up, um, uh, we have to actively lay up treasure in heaven. So remember, you can't just say, I'm not going to lay up I'm not, I don't need things to make me happy. Okay, that may be so. But if you're not laying up treasure on earth and you aren't laying up treasure in heaven, you're caught in the middle. You're like, what's, what, what is your life? What is your life? It, it's much easier to convince somebody to go from, hey man, it, stuff is nice. But don't put your stock in that. Put it in this. Put it in Jesus. Lay up, lay up treasure in heaven uh, uh, because it, uh, it won't, uh, it, it fades not away, the Bible says. Now, according to um, uh, a dictionary, the mammon is this. Uh, by, uh, uh, it, it means wealth or riches. That's, exa that's all it means, just very mammon. It means stuff, wealth and riches. Um, so if we are not careful, wealth and riches can become our God. Now, I don't want wealth and riches to become our God. Um, Yesterday we just went out, uh, took the family out to eat, and then I, I got the boys a couple, uh, and we we pinched the pennies. We didn't, I didn't splurge. I set a budget. I said, "This is, hey, we we had the money. We could do whatever. I I, I have a job now. Hey, proud proud, proud for me. Uh, we I, I can buy things. We can do things. We can go there. I don't know. Nope, nope. No. Here's the budget. Here's the budget. Just because we have it doesn't mean we need to do it." And just because we have the means to get the best, I'm not saying we do, but just because you have the means or we have the means to get the best doesn't mean we should do it. Nothing wrong with always looking for a bargain. Now, you shouldn't, um, I don't think you should twist people's arms necessarily. I mean, pay, pay what's fair, but don't be wasteful. And God honors those who have the right, a spiritual view of money. A spiritual view of mammon. If we can, there's nothing wrong with mammon as long as you have a spiritual view of it. And you have, have a whole lot more joy and be able to enjoy the things that you have now knowing one day that they're going to burn up. 
That's why I'm going to drive that car fast. Uh, no, that's why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of it. But also, I'm, I can enjoy it, but also be detached from it. Why? Because I have a spiritual view that that's wood, hay, stubble. It's going to burn up one day. What can I have, Lord, that isn't going to burn up one day? What can I have? What can I, what can I take with me? If I can't take my tie collection, I, I, I have, I don't know, like 90 ties that I've had since like high school and building up till now, like 90 ties. It's a lot of ties. I have um, a couple different suits. And, and by the way, I wouldn't want to take suits and ties to heaven anyway, unless it was to strangle the guy that made them. Uh, uh, but um, uh, uh, a, a hot rod or a motorcycle or um, uh, my, uh, my, my uh, a vacation house or, I'm not saying I have those things. Um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my Lucas's gun collection. Um, Jamie's uh, watch collection. Um, and I have just a few odds and ends here and there. Uh, I, but those things, they're going to burn up. My a car collection, going to burn up. I worked for a guy my first summer job. He had an incredible car collection. <sighs> burn up one day. Your stamp collection, <sighs> burned up one day. Your card collection, <sighs> burned up one day. Your, um, uh... Dan, your paraphernalia collection burned up one day. Your 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 uh, your, your your plant collection, your art collection burned up one day, all gone one day. God, Jesus isn't saying those things are wrong and you can't have them. He's saying have a spiritual view about them. Have a spiritual view that these things are. Um, they're nice to enjoy. He said the Bible says that God has given us all things freely and or richly to enjoy. There's nothing wrong with those things. I like those things. And by the way, I think it's a, a, a unique um, uh, uh, identifier that God knows about you. God knows you love plants or pets, or God knows that you have this, this certain love of nature. And I'm not talking tree hugging weird, but you love, you, you love nature or you love art or you love um, capturing the moment with photography. God knows that about you. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I, you know, and if I think Jesus was here today, I think Jesus would like sports cars and hot rods. I, I, I'm not saying he'd own a collection, but I think he'd like them. I think if you pulled up in one, he'd be like, yeah, let's go for a ride. He, guys pull up on, a, on a, 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 a fast Arabian horse or something, just like, let me take that thing around the block. Let me, let me take that thing around, a race camel. Let me take that thing around the block, you know? I don't think Jesus shied away from those things. I think Jesus, as the son of God, he knows what we like. It's not wrong when it becomes wrong is when we put it above God, when we put it in place of God. So um, uh, let's be careful not to let riches become our God, our, our God. Paul called covetous, a covetous person, an idolater in Ephesians 5. He's, uh, Lucas and I, we were looking at um, uh, what family SUVs yesterday. He said, let's look at Yukon. Let's look at Yukon Denali's. I said, all right, cool. Let's look at Yukon Denali's. Uh, an, an XL, you know, and um, the Denali is the sweet package, you know, and we were looking at them and I said, you know, with, with car gurus, you can set a budget and a price and a color and a trim and uh, how, you know, the size of the engine, the kind of fuel. So we set all these parameters and uh, we were looking at them and uh, uh, I got up, I had, uh, Jamie asked me to do something and I, we were watching a football game and um, I got up and, and I put the phone out. I said, okay, that's enough. That's enough coveting. And, and Lucas, he looked at me, he said, that was, we were coveting? I said, yes, Lucas, you led me into sin. By, I, no, and I, and I told him, I said, no, not really. No, we weren't really coveting. We were admiring and saying, hey, maybe one day, maybe one day. Like this, this kicking the blower motor and the escalator, this one, come on, it wouldn't come on. So I turned the rear on, the rear came on. Um, uh, but uh, eventually, one day down the road, we're going to need a new family. Uh, uh, one day. But that still starts, it still runs, it still drives. And as long as Jamie can put on gloves, wear a coat. <laughs> the rear heat works, that's what matters. Turn it, on, turn it on long enough before you have to leave with the rear heat on, it'll warm up the whole car. Um, but uh, uh, one, one day, why? Because wood, hay, stubble breaks down. Wood, hay, stubble collects rust. Wood, hay, stubble has wiring issues. Wood, hay, stubble... Breaks down, doesn't it? it? It does. So one day it'll need replaced. So I have a spiritual view of that. So look, we weren't coveting. We weren't coveting. I, now I can't tell you I have coveted. I have looked at houses before with 10 plus acres and 
four plus bedrooms and two plus baths um, with outbuildings and went, man. And then I said, nah. Eventually, as I grew up, why? Because I, I wanted a spiritual view. Because I would um, uh, become discontent with where God currently has me in this present time, and therefore, maybe if I let it fester long enough, blame God why my life isn't the way that I think Zillow says it should be. Why? Because I didn't have a spiritual view of the things that I already possessed. A spiritual view. A spiritual view. Paul called the, the covetous person an idolater. Wow, oh, man, I don't want to be an idolater. That's breaking thou shalt not have any other gods before me. He told the Colossians, he said, put to death covetousness, which is idolatry. Put it to death. So you know what I did? I put Zillow, well, I didn't put Zillow to death. I put it to death on my Google search. I learned how to Google from my dad. I didn't, I, I, uh, 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 realtor.com. There's nothing wrong with houses. There's nothing wrong with wanting those things. But does it become... Does it become in place of my spirituality? So to prevent mammon or the idea of I can take it with me, to prevent mammon from becoming my God, I'm going to give you just a couple of things uh, in, man, 12 minutes, okay? 12 minutes. Number one, number one, lay up treasure in heaven, the Bible says. Lay up treasure in heaven. Why in heaven and not on earth? Why lay up treasure in heaven and not on earth? Man, I want stuff. I, I want stuff here. Lord, I want stuff here. Why lay up treasure in heaven, not on earth? On earth, why? Why? Because moth and rust destroy. Material things are perishable. Material things are perishable. Perishable. I mean, el morte, dead, they die, they decay, they rot. They perish. Thieves break in and steal. Material things are the subject of theft. I may have covetousness under control, and I may have a household of goods and a car of goods and a, a, some, a, a life of goods, but that doesn't mean the brother across the aisle from me has handled covetousness. It doesn't mean the guy, my neighbor has got a handle of covetousness. It doesn't mean they have. So I may be on track with the Lord, spiritually minded, and, and um, uh, I have things of substance. The Bible says if you put God first and you follow his law, that you'll be prosperous and successful. And so here I am gleaning the fruits of following after, the, or, or uh, gathering, and have gathered the, the, the fruits of following the Lord, and he's blessing. That doesn't mean the world, folks, we're living in the kingdom of Satan right now. We live right now behind enemy lines. So God says, man, you can't take any of this with you, and it's going to perish. It's going to perish, and people are going to steal it. As soon as you die, people are going to, the hawks are going to swoop in, whether it's government hawks or family hawks. They're going to swoop in and take all your stuff. That's why I'm not leaving anything. I'm not leaving anything. Um, um, so Luke... Luke says, if I get to it first. Uh, uh, but uh, they, they, they come in and they take their stuff. Oh, what it, was it Curtis Hudson who said, be a, give, be a given while you're living so you can be knowing where it's going. Be given while you're living so you can be knowing where it's going. I like to know where my stuff is going. I like to know that I have, uh, uh, that the things that I have that I can't take with me, I give away. I give them away. This guy um, uh, at the store yesterday, there's a place called Mega Disc Replay. He had a box of these movies and stuff. You can sell and redeem and whatnot. And they had a box of stuff that they didn't even want to buy. He was trying to give it to me. I'm like, man, I don't, I don't want it. I don't want, I don't want that stuff. Like, I don't want it. Well, God wants not your stuff. We talked about it in Sunday school. In Micah chapter 6. What doth the Lord require of thee? To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. You see, God is not asking for you and for your stuff. Actually, in Luke, oh, what is it? Luke chapter 12, he says, um, uh, seek the kingdom of God, and he says, and, uh, uh, but rather seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Man, I get the kingdom? I get God, it's God's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. But he says this, sell that ye have and give alms. 
provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure, uh, uh, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupt. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And this is what he told to the rich man because he knew the rich man, his riches got in the way. Now ask yourself this morning, I don't know of any rich people here, but is your comfort getting in the way? Are your riches getting in the way? Is your uh, lifestyle getting in the way of laying up treasure in heaven? The Bible says that we can lose our reward. Now I don't want to lose a reward, especially if I've earned a reward. I don't want to throw it all, all the way. And by the way, you can have a spiritual mindset, spiritual mindset for a long time and then change from it and start to gather. I think we could all talk, to, talk about folks and not talk about them, but the prodigals, once who sang where you sang and sat where you sat and do what you did and now they're living for self, living for self and they're laying up treasures on earth. Get that money, get that money, get that money as this new generation says, get that money. Football players just say, get, get, get your bag. Get your bag. Get your bag. They're talking about get your bag of money. Get your money because you only have a certain amount of time to play. Yes, and then you get that money, and you have that money, and then you spend up that money. But what shall a man give in exchange for his life? What does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Now, thank the Lord I can't lose my soul. I'm, I'm not going to hell. If I, if I started today to live for self and for wealth, I still wouldn't die and go to hell. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, but I would be throwing away my inheritance in heaven. I'd be throwing it away. I'd be throwing away my, my, um, uh, uh, my portion, and I don't want to throw away my portion. I know you don't either. But why, why lay up treasure in heaven and not on earth? Well, because people on earth steal it, because, just, because rust and moth get in and, and, and destroy it. But the Bible says, in heaven, neither moth nor rust destroys our treasure is unperishable or imperishable in heaven. Thieves don't break through and steal. Our treasure, get this, our treasure is safely guarded by, I think, the cherubims of heaven with flaming swords who have an eye that sees all about like God planted in the Garden of Eden when he had to kick out Adam and Eve. Our Listen, you can have the greatest um, security system, a great safe fingerprint, eye scan, whatever the case, retinal scanner, whatever it may be, but it doesn't stand a chance to the security of the treasure that's in heaven. I won't lose my treasure in heaven. And we think, treasure, well, what is the treasure in heaven? Gold? The Bible, I know the Bible says a golden crown, a crown, a crown of right, a robe of righteousness, a crown of glory, a mansion. Uh, there's gotta be, there's gotta be stuff that comes with it. And I know the Bible says we throw our crowns at the feet of the Lord, and, and I get that. But in heaven, listen, if just dying and going to heaven and not having to go to hell is reward enough, that's reward in itself. But this thing about God and mammon, God and mammon, folks, we cannot serve both of them. We can't serve both of them. Number one, one number one, lay up treasure in heaven. Number two, where your treasure is, there will your heart be. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be. Now, what is, what's your heart? It's your affections and your hopes and your dreams. Your heart, your, your hope, your affections. If your treasure is on earth, your heart's going to experience a whole lot of disappointment. The Bible says, hope deferred, make it the heart sick. If your treasure is on earth, you're gonna, you know what a lot of people do every single week? They, they scratch off them scratchers, they fill out those numbers and they submit those numbers, and they tune into the radio, or they tune into the television, they tune into the time, whatever, however they tune into it. Why? Because their treasure's on earth. Their treasure, they think that if they could just get out of the neighborhood they're in and drive in the car that they have, that $440 million or whatever it is would make them happy, and it would. It would, right? I mean, come on, 440 million, hey, four million. At this point, $40. Uh, it'd make me happy. It'd make you happy. Amen. It'd, it'd make you happy. Some money in the hand, a big old bet. Wow, the experience of going through winning that much money and then how you would spend it and what you would do with it. Sure, it would make you happy until you got to heaven and found out you had no treasure there. Now, I want both. I want treasure here and there. But I'm willing to say, 
Lord, if it's your will, I'll, go, I'll bypass the treasure here for the treasure there. But Lord, how do I get treasure there? How do I lay up treasure in heaven? Folks, there's a great many ways. But I think Sunday school was a great precursor to this message. To do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God. To do What is required of you? O B E D. I-E-N-C-E, yes, sir, obedience is the very best way to lay up treasure in heaven, <laughs> to show that you believe. Obedience to the Bible. Obedience to the Bible is how you lay up treasure. We sing, bringing our sheaves with us, amen. What is, what is treasure you lay up in heaven? Souls. Souls. Got the gospel, how many times you spread the gospel. Now, here, let, let me finish. I'll give you a couple things. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. People are disappointed at every, ter- every turn with the things of this earth. I have four minutes. But if your treasure is in heaven, your, heart, your heart's not going to suffer great disappointment. Family. Hey, you know what I treasure? I treasure my dad texted me, he said, um, blah, blah, blah. Something about home. And I said, man, I miss, I miss my family. I miss my family. And he texts back, oh, you miss me and mom. That's so sweet. I was like, yeah, I miss your washer and dryer. That's what I mean. No. I mean, <laughs> yes, I miss my family. Of course I miss my family. Why? Because I treasure my family. I miss my church on Wednesdays. Why? Because I treasure my church. I treasure it. I treasure these things. Well, if I treasure them, I want to make sure they're going there. I want to make sure I'm going there so I can have my treasure for eternity. Um, uh, uh, the, treasure, the, the treasure I can take with me is peace. The treasure I take with me is confidence. The treasure I take with me is my testimony that I live for the Lord Jesus Christ. If your treasure's in heaven, your heart won't suffer great disappointments. For your treasure, the Bible says, is incorruptible, undefiled, and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, kept by the power of God through faith. How cool is, I mean, that's just like, those are like haymakers, back to back to back. Let let me read that one more time. Incorruptible, your your treasure is incorruptible, undefiled, and fades not away, and it's reserved in heaven for you, kept by the power of God through faith. That's like boom, 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 bam, knockout punch, That gives me, I know who I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. The day that I die and the day of judgment. What have I committed to him? I committed, number one, my spirit. Uh, Dear Jesus Christ, I believe in you. Dear God, I repent. I repent of my unbelief, and I turn to Jesus Christ as my only propitiation, uh, 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 faith, uh, uh, grace, uh, by God's grace, and and, and by the, the faith that's in me, I believe on Jesus Christ. I ask him into my heart. Boom, I know that I am going there, but what else is going with me? I want to make sure my family's going with me. I want to make sure my friends are going with me. Yeah, but what about this treasure thing? Rewards, the Bible talks about. Rewards through perseverance. Rewards for enduring. Rewards for faithfulness. I can't tell you how much how much each of them are worth. I don't know what their heavenly value are. I just know that God says they are rewards and they are treasure. Treasure in heaven. And by the way, the treasure that we think is treasure here is not even close in comparison to the treasure that is in heaven. The most valuable things that we have here, God says, they're going to burn up. Burn up. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be. And then lastly, number three, how do we let treasures in heaven? First, by becoming God's child. Secondly, by using the material wealth that we do have This is scriptural, the material wealth that we do have to bless those around us. Folks, I I can't tell you how many times that folks in here have been a blessing to me and others have been blessings to you in your time of need. That right there, that right there is building up treasure in heaven. When the, the Bible says, he that giveth to the poor lendeth, to the Lord. Well, when will he repay? He guarantees that he repays in heaven. Guarantees it. I have no problem um, uh, helping out where and when I can. But to be honest, sometimes I need the help. 
And God has always had a way of coming through, through you, for me, and vice versa. And God says, when you take what you have, that I've given you, by the way, that's mine anyway, that you just are a steward of. When you take what I've given you and you help others with it, you are building up for yourself treasure in heaven. Treasure in heaven. I would call names and call attention to people right now. I won't do it. But I've known people who've given just about everything away. And you got nothing to show for it. Not even through the people you invested in. You thought you were investing in people. And I don't mean to, I, 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 I'm not brushing them to the side. I'm not saying what you did and, what, and who they are now doesn't matter. They can always come back to Christ. I, I understand that. But really what you were doing, there was, a, there was a byproduct. And that byproduct was an investment into a bank account in heaven that gathers treasure that fades not away, that does not get stolen, that is incorruptible, that is undefiled, guarded by God himself in heaven. Now, if, you, if that, that right there doesn't turn a light bulb on, wow, it's not just an investment in people and a love for people, but God honors that through his word that he says, that lays up treasure in heaven when we help others. Become his child Use the material that you have to help and bless those around you. Jesus instructed the young ruler. He instructed his disciples in order to have a treasure in heaven that does not fail, love and help others. Paul wrote to Timothy and charged him. He says, those rich in this present age, like we have today, more millionaires and billionaires in the world than at any other time, this present age, that they may be storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. He's, he's talking to, um, and not saying that these rich people given to the poor in charities and philanthropists buys their way into heaven. He's talking about already the brethren who are already rich. He's saying these, these rich people, these rich folks in the church, Timothy, if they will do right with their riches, they will also have riches in heaven. It's a, it's a, a vain life to have riches on this earth and go to heaven empty-handed. Uh, but it would be a full life if it were if it were reversed. And you said, man, I barely made it through and through life. I was sometimes not able to pay my bills, but God saw me through and you laid up treasure in heaven because you're obedience to the book. So uh, great generosity. Um, uh, and, and the Bible says, the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Um, if we will try to gain biblical mastery and obedience, over mammon, wealth, and riches. Um, make sure, make sure that when we hear these truths, we try to obey these truths. The Bible says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now, we are all responsible to the truth of the word of God. You want, to, you want to take something with you? Take something that lasts forever. Take something that lasts forever. And uh, the things that last forever, of course, is our souls, our loved ones, and our faithfulness to this book. Well done? Or, man, you, you had a shot. You could have done better. Well done? I hope that's what we'll hear today. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Listen, I don't uh, believe anybody in here this morning is uh, deceived or has the wool pulled over their eyes by their riches because I don't think there are rich, and I mean rich people, what we define as rich, but you know your contentment and your comfort can be just as deceptive. Our uh, being naive can be deceptive. That's why I have a whole duty to preach the whole word of God. One of them is about our riches, laying up for ourselves treasure in heaven. And I don't want to see one person in here get to heaven and not have treasure laid up. Uh, that's, I, I'm saying I don't want to see it. I'm not saying it as you'll have my disapproval. I'm saying is I, I don't want you to have to experience that. I don't want you to have to go to heaven and be like, man, I didn't do much. I didn't accomplish much for the Lord while I was down there. 
I didn't, uh, I didn't, I just kind of floated through. Um, I'll, I'll say this and I'll have Miss Jennifer begin to play. I'll have you stand and, um, I'm not quite sure what the invitation would even be about. The Lord would know what's on your heart. Actually, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray for our congregation as you pray right where you are. But the treasure in heaven is what I wanted to emphasize this morning. Not mammon. I don't think folks here are too much or have so much mammon that it's keeping you from where you're needing to be but we can be caught in the middle and not be laying up treasure in heaven. You can be just a good old person and still not be laying up treasure in heaven. Lay up treasure in heaven, get saved, start obeying the book. Do justly, love mercy, walk humbly with thy God. I want, I want you to do is stay right where you are. I'm gonna go to the Lord in prayer and then uh, we'll be dismissed. Heavenly Father, I... I thank you for today. I, I thank you for the truth of, of serving God and mammon, how we can't serve both of them, how one of, us will, one of them will pull us away. And usually if, we, if it's a coin flip, we usually choose mammon. Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you would get a hold of our hearts. And if there's anything that's between you and, and us as individuals, or you and I, Lord, I'd ask that you'd help us to clear it, help us to confess it and move it out of the way. If, if something's been keeping us from growing in grace, if something's been keeping us from a closer walk with you, if, if it's been some sort of object, some sort of, uh, if we're fixated on stocks and fixated on money and fixated on pension money, and I, Lord, I understand many facets of it, but Lord, you know when we cross the line into idolatry, into covetousness and sin, Heavenly Father, help us to be attentive to serving God and mammon, to always weigh ourselves in the balances and say, where am I? Am I doing what's right? Have I helped my brother? Have I helped that family? Have I helped the Lord? Have I helped the cause? Lord, we want to help the whales and help the dolphins and help the animals, but what about helping the, the human? What about helping the children? What about helping the the, the single father, the single mother. The Bible says that we look upon the widows and the fatherless and those in need indeed. And then, Lord, even loving our enemies. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you would help us to have a good Samaritan heart and attitude. Help us not to keep our hands clenched and our heart closed. Lord, I'd ask that you'd help our church and churches like ours to get a hold of this truth like this and serve God. Be willing to sell whatever it takes and get whatever it takes if the Lord lays it on our heart and we feel as we should to get it out of the way. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. Lord, bless the rest of our day. Uh, give us safety as we go about. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Miss Sarah?